Okay, here goes. Um, remote lesson number one. Um, I didn't say I was going to do this, but I thought, why not? Um, you get to see my face, which is a bit more interesting for you. And I, and I do want to carry on as usual, it's, it's, as in this is as, as normal a lesson as possible. So although I'm going to come off, my face is going to disappear in a minute, I'll still continue to talk over and you can make notes like you would in a, uh, a normal lesson. Uh, obviously, you've got the opportunity to pause, um, pause the video um, when you need to. Um, I suppose just before we start, it is, it is in all seriousness, I'm just going to see a few of you laughing, I imagine, at the moment. Um, but this is an important time for you. You need to continue working hard, keeping up with the scheme of work. Um, we've only got one more chapter left, um, with me anyway. Um, it is important you do that because it's going to it's going to make make a big difference next year when it when it really is important. So uh, uh, please do stick with it. I'm going to try and produce a video uh, every lesson if I can, um, and you can tune in. Uh, also, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm sure it's uh, um, something you've been looking forward to for a long time, um, and I'm trying to boost my numbers as you can imagine. Um, and, and please do that. Um, Right, here we go. So we're going to start, it was chapter 10 where we left off. So that's where we're going to start today. And I'm going to disappear now. So goodbye. See you next, see you next lesson. But you'll obviously still hear my voice. Okay, here we go. Right, okay. So hopefully you can still hear me. Now, let's just get this. Uh, so we, we last lesson we looked at locating roots uh, using the sort of the different sign difference. This time we're going to zoom in a little bit further and actually get a bit more accurate in terms of how we find out a solution uh, to an equation. Uh, this, this technique um, is called iteration. Okay, iteration, so we could put a title iteration. Uh, the date is the 24th, I think. It's the 24th. Okay, it's the 24th. Um, so, and um, so, 24th iteration. Now, you would have done this at GCSE, actually, but what we're going to do uh, today is sort of maybe zoom in a little bit more on the detail and why it works. Um, so, what, equations like this, so I'm going to give you an equation to solve. x um, equals um, root x plus 1. Okay, now there's different ways you could solve that equation. Um, in fact, this one you can actually solve uh, fairly easily because you could square both sides. Um, you could get it equal to zero. Uh, it doesn't factorize, but you can use the quadratic formula and, and just trust me on this, that one of the solutions is 1.62. There is obviously another solution, uh, but we're only gonna use that solution. Um, that's, one, that's the solution we're gonna use uh, as, as an example in this case. So the other way of solving it not all equations can be easily solved like the quadratic formula or the cubic formula. Sometimes we have to use a bit of trial and error. And I'm just going to use that example above just to, to demonstrate this. So another way you can solve this equation is uh, plotting the graphs. You might want to try this on Desmos. But if you do plot the left-hand side, so if you plot y equals x, you get a, uh, to get a straight line like that. Okay, now if you plot y equals x, um, root x plus 1, again, um, I'm not going to go through the details, but you can go on Desmos or have a play around, you end up with a, a curve uh, like this, okay, root uh, x plus 1. Now, obviously, um, where they cross is the solution, and we know that is going to be uh, 1.62, because we solved it, we solved it above, didn't we, okay? So, there's different ways we can do this. Now, on your calculator, you can use an iterative uh, formula that helps you, well, that zooms in on this root, on this value here. And in order to do this, you need to pick a starting point. Okay, stick with that. Now, in, a, in an exam question, it will, it will always give you the starting point, to be honest. And we usually call the starting point x0. And in this case, I'm going to use 0 0.5 as a starting point. So let's just re-establish re the equation we had, we were trying to solve, was x equals root uh, x plus 1. Now, if I put 0 0.5, if my starting value, x uh, 0, is, if I put 0 0.5, x 0, my first guess, 0 0.5, my next guess, 
is going to be, or my next value I'm going to pick is 0 0.5 plus 1. I'm going to put that into the right hand side. Now the reason for that is if I put that into the right hand side, if I look at the graph, my output, I'm going to, I'm going to go up at 0 0.5, hit my, I hit my root, uh, root x plus 1 graph, my output there is going to be, and if I do work this out, you can try it out yourself as well, but the answer to that is 1.225. Okay, 1.225. That's my output for the next input, if you like. So 1.225. What I do is I then come across there. And I come down. That is going to be my next value. X1 is going to be 1.225. Dot, dot, dot. And if I input that, so my X2 is going to be um, root 1.225. Uh, five da, 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 plus one. In reality, I would not this. I would must use my answer key on the calculator. Do not use the rounded answer. But if I do use that value there, you can see again. I input it there. I'm going to get this as an output this time. Okay, I'm going to get my x three there, and then that keeps going in an iterative way. And hopefully, you'll see that I'm going to. If I keep doing that. It's going to it's going to well, it's going to close in on that root. So after eventually, eventually this is going to close in on the solution, which was 1.62. And it doesn't take too long before you get that value. And and after a while, it will just hold at 1.62. It will not it will not go any further. And that is your solution. And that's how you answer that question. Now those types of graphs, this is called a convergent. Um, this is called a convergent uh, iteration, convergent iteration, because it converges to a root. And also this is called a staircase, known as a staircase diagram, because um, you're sort of climbing the stairs to the root. You're going up and then it's, you can see it's like a staircase homing in on that root there. This is very commonly used in, in real life to solve problems like this, which can't be solved for other means. Now there is a different type of uh, convergent iteration. I'm not going to go through this. It works exactly the same way, except it homes in on the root in like a cobweb way. Now you'll see, if you can probably refer to the textbook now, uh, page 278. I've used the example on that page, um, but I'm not going to go through the cobweb. But it works in exactly the same way. It zooms in on the root, but it sort of works round the root, and it zooms in until a point there. Okay, and you'll see that in, on page 278, those examples. So they're convergent iterations. Now, there is, sadly, uh, some divergent iterations. Um, divergent iterations, they're just not, not as good because they take you away from the root, sadly. So they take you away from the root and you end up getting further and, way, further, and further away from your answer. So again, you'll see on page 278, there's an example of this. Um, but again, if we were to solve... In this time, x equals x squared minus one. This time, okay. It does. It, I mean, it's the same solution as before, um, but imagine that's the x squared minus one graph. Sorry, and then this is the y equals x. Now it depends where I start, whether it becomes convergent or divergent. Now, if I start here, um, now this is. Uh, let's imagine that's two x equals 2, that's my first value. So my first value is going to input there, and then that's going to be I've got my second value, so my x, uh, x1 there is going to be my second input. And can you see, I'm just going to go, every time I input, I'm going to get further and further down this path, and it's just going to be diverging. Every value is going to get further and further away from this root. So that is a negative about using this technique to find uh, equate, uh, solutions to equations. Also, the negative of this is it only ever gives you one answer. And, and where you'll find this used is if you can um, remember to use, if you use that solve button on your class whiz, maybe have a go at solve, using the solve button, you always have to put in a first value of x. So you always have to put in a first value of x, and that is basically your x0. And if you don't pick an x0 that's, that forms a convergent iteration, it will just come up error on your screen. So maybe try it with this equation. If you put this into your equation, if you put x squared minus 1 minus x equals 0, 
just a rearrangement of that equation. Put that in, type it in exactly as you see it into your class whiz. I haven't got my class whiz with me today, but I will have a next lesson. But type that in exactly as you see it into class whiz. Press shift, solve, and then a button will come up that says X. And you have to type in your first value of X. So type in two, if you type in two, it will probably come up error as a solution because it's taking you away from the uh, converged route. Now, if you'd have put in a value down here, you that it should zoom in on, on that route. So type in a value down here of X and then it will, it will give you a solution, okay? Right, that's the sort of background. I'm gonna give you, we're gonna have a look at an example now. So all of these are from the textbook, um, but page uh, 279, let's look at example five, and you'll see when you're actually answering these questions um, that they're, they're quite straightforward. So we've got fx equals x cubed um, minus 3x squared um, minus 2x plus five. Okay, part A of the question is show that it has a root, show it has now, I suppose it should say at least a root, shouldn't it? But it shows it has a root, um, basically, between between three and four. Yeah, that's what the question says. And this is exactly what we did last lesson, so I'm not going to go through it too much detail, but we put in three, and f of three in this case is uh, minus one. We put in four, which is the other end of the root, and we get 13, and then we make a statement. We must make the statement, change in sign, Therefore, um, uh, a root lies between these points. We should we should also say that um, as as the uh, graph is continuous, that's that's really important as well because um, we know that a graph if a, if a graph has those discontinuities. Did I get that right, Amelia? I think I did. Then, um, then obviously we can't rely on that method. But in this case, it is a continuous graph. So that's part one. To be honest, that's probably worth two marks. You get one mark for doing the work and then one mark for the statement. Part B, so use the iterative formula. So use xn plus one. It looks a lot more complicated than it actually is here. It's the root of xn cubed minus 2xn plus 5 over 3. Um, right, to calculate your values of x, so we need to calculate x1, x2, and x3. And I'm only going to do the first one. It says, it tells us, it has to tell us x0 is uh, what 1.5. It changes its starting point for part b, which you'll notice in the example. And that will probably mean it zooms in on a different route. So if you change your starting point, then you change your potential route you're homing in on. Um, but we're going to use the 1.5 one uh, to begin with. Now, in, in terms of how this is so what this is here is a rearrangement of this equaling zero. OK, so this equaling zero, this is a rearrangement. And we always have to get x equals because if you look at the, the staircase or the cobweb, it relies on the fact that x equals y because your next input was your previous output of y. Okay, so you always have to rearrange it to get x equals for this to work. And in practice, how this works is, so x0 x is 1.5, x1, sorry, not x0, x1 is equal to the square root of uh, 1.5 cubed minus 2 times 1.5 plus 5 all over 3 um, and, and I'm just going to look up in the example what that tells us that tells us it's 1.3385 now in reality x2 how you would then do this on your calculator is you would use the answer key okay use the answer key rather than um, so if you use the answer key there and keep pressing equals, it will then tell you what the next one is. And do test this out. Uh, really important you do that. Okay. And if you keep pressing equals, you'll see that it's it's converging this sequence. It's converging. Um, so it's going to home in on a root. What you will find is on part two, x they've taken a different starting value 
and you'll see, I'm not going to do it, but you'll see that that has caused it to become divergent, actually. So it hasn't homed in on a different route. It means it's just, it hasn't, it hasn't worked. It's not going to give you a route. So it's divergent um, and, and you don't get anywhere with that. Okay. Right. Okay. I think that is it for enough talking from me. Um, it is up to you now to do some questions on this. So I want you to go to page 280, please. Um, exercise uh, 10B and the questions I'd like you to do are as follows. I'd like you to actually do the evens. So it's um, page 280 um, well, and 281. Question 2 to 10. Inclusive Albie. Yeah, inclusive. And Ben, don't try and sneak out of that. And um, I, I, so you haven't got too many questions. You've got two, four, six, how many? Two, four, six, five questions. Five questions. And I, what I want you to do is you can either do it in your book um, or, or on paper, I don't mind. You must scan these in and send them to me. I must see that you've done these and check that you've, check that you've done it. So you must scan in. I will be checking this um, tomorrow morning. So I'm going to check every piece of work the following day. So I'm going to be checking checking this um, on Wednesday morning. Can you email me the scan? I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'm not going to I'm not going to um, spend much time uh, looking through your workings too much. I'm just going to be seeing that you've done it. I'm going to be monitoring that carefully. So I'm going to scan in and then send send to my email, please. Okay, right, that's session one done. Please do give me some feedback. If there's any problems with the technical issues of this, I will really appreciate that. I think as the time goes on, I we'll get better and better uh, at doing these videos, and hopefully they're helpful. Um, but um, good luck this week, and I'll be in touch.